This episode of TFL Talking Trucks podcast is dedicated to the all new 2024 Ford Ranger. So uh, uh, on this episode, you will see the base Rangers. Uh, this has happened, just happens to be an XLT. Then also Raptor Ranger as well. At the end of this episode, we can compare the Ranger Raptor, maybe even to some other Raptors in the family. But here I have the chief engineer. Juan de Peña, did I say that correctly? Yeah, you said it perfectly. Yes, you did, hey, Andre. I appreciate it. Good so to see you I, again. I, saw, I saw you last year. Yes. Um, we talked about pre production trucks, right? But now production has begun. Full production. The trucks are shipping, right? Yes, they are shipping, absolutely. So this is exciting. So, so on this episode, let's kind of go through, um, just walk over around this truck. We're in Utah near Salt Lake. It's snowing outside, but we're indoors, so we're able to just you know show you the truck without you know it being covered in snow basically yeah it's comfortable inside a little bit more comfortable so let's just go over for the basics right um just start with the kind of the chassis the frame sure and let's kind of go beyond it absolutely um it's an all-new truck the exterior the interior the electrical architecture the frame including the expanded engine lineup uh the the wheelbase is plus two inches the wheel track width is plus two inches uh, in doing that, it allowed us to expand our engine lineup now to, in addition to the 2.3 liter EcoBoost uh, four-cylinder, to also now add a 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6 as a step-up engine, and now all new for 2024, the Ranger Raptor with a three liter EcoBoost V6 as well. So, so you made the front end a little bit, or the engine bay also a little bit wider. That's exactly, we yeah. have an all new hydroform front end structure with a larger opening for better cooling and also better package space for those better, large, uh, for those larger engines. All right, and you're launching the base Ranger lineup with a 2.3. Correct, right? yep. So it's gonna have across all the trim levels. Yes. Um, and the power stays the same from where it was before, right? Uh, 270 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque on the, on the yeah. EcoBoost uh, 4. Yeah. On the 2.7 liter, it starts at 315 horsepower, 400 pound-feet of torque, so significant walk up. And on the three liter EcoBoost V6 on the Ra uh, Raptor, it's 405 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque. So that's a lot it, of horsepower. That's, up, exactly. that's class leading, yeah, yeah on the Raptor. And they're all with our class exclusive 10-speed automatic transmission on all three. Okay, and the transmission is common or are uh, there like different power levels on the transmission uh, as well? Torque capacity on the Raptor is a little bit higher. Okay. But uh, uh, same family of, of uh, it's, uh, 10R60 still, you know, the same uh, transmission. Uh, they all offer rear locking diffs are available. On the Raptor, of course, you have a front locking diff as well. Hey, podcast listeners and TFL Talk viewers. I wanted to take a minute to talk to you about a quick and simple way to sell your car or truck with the help of our new partner, High Road. With High Road's online portal, you enter your vehicle's VIN number or plate, mileage, and zip code, and you'll get competing offers from several qualified dealers in your area within seconds. You pick the best deal offered and follow through with the dealer to sell your vehicle. No more managing scammy emails from buyers on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. No more time wasted on no-show buyers. No bait and switch with a, will you take a check excuse from sketchy buyers. Now keep in mind, these offers will be for trade-in values of your vehicle. If you want to go through the hassle of getting more for your vehicle, that's up to you. But if you want to sell your vehicle hassle-free and fast, go to tfltruck.com and click Sell Your Truck in the navigation menu. Or click on the High Road ad at the bottom of the website if you're on mobile, or click on the column if you're on a desktop. High Road makes it easy, and we like easy. Well, let's talk about the frame in the back, right? Absolutely. Because you changed it a little bit. Yes, we have our our Hotchkiss rear leaf spring suspension set up on all the base rangers, and that's he, he's pointing to those yeah. composite leaf uh, screens, uh, springs. Yeah. Uh, we also have outboard mounted dampers, and with a wider track frame, longer wheelbase frame, and outboard mounted dampers, now we get a much much wider tuning capability for you know, laden, unladen conditions of the pickup truck, it, it we're, we're much better able to minimize that jittery, nervous, you know, feeling that you get on an empty pickup truck. Well, so it's always, it's always handling. better to have a slightly wider track, right? Correct. More stability and 128 inch wheelbase, if I'm remembering the spec sheet correctly. All combined, some more stability, absolutely. Yeah. And we were able to now push the wheel well 
outboard on the on the all new pickup box, so we can actually carry, you know, full sheet of plywood and drywall flat on the floor. Right here, right here, right yeah. there. You yeah. got it. It's exactly it. Which before we weren't able to do that. We have a new tailgate. On the new tailgate, it's a it's a working surface, so it's a we call it li uh, easy lift because it is a steel tail, but we have these torsion bars that assist in lifting, and then we have dampers obviously for the drop down. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. So it is kind of a dual system. Exactly. There's a little bit this of mechanic. This is for the assist up, yeah. and that's for the dampening down. Yeah, that's and, pretty interesting. Um, let me see. We have uh, clamp pockets on both sides, so it's a working level. Sur you know, it's a working surface. You can clamp like a, you know, a, a piece of you know wood down, and and yeah, with 400 watts of in bed power, you can have uh, you know your tools out here and actually work. Yeah, let's show that because there is a 12 volt, right? Yeah. And then also the 400 watt. Right next to 110 it. or That's 120 it. volt, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Uh, six tie down. Uh, hookup points inside of the bed, uh, LED lights on both sides, the center chimsel or center high mounted stop lamp, LED lights also projecting down. This has 360 degree camera and zone lighting as well. So when you're out at the campsite, you, on your Ford app or on the screen, you could turn on whichever zone you want, wherever you happen to be sitting. So again, it's just a much, much more uh, friendly customer experience and just a better experience all around living with the truck, the working under the truck, and inside where we spend a lot of our time driving the truck. Yeah, and I think there's an image there on the wall. There's a zone lighting. So really, I mean, I mean, those features are also on bigger Ford trucks, right? The F-150s, the Super Duty. So you're kind of bringing that Ford technology to this truck that, as well. That's exactly it. We are, you know, the big brother, Super Duty, and <laughs> F-150, they've had these technologies and they've really been uh, making the experience better for uh, Ford truck customers for a long time. Now it's finally coming to the all new Ranger, including the payload trail backup assist, which is a game changer for us. Uh, it really, really makes towing uh, a, a seamless experience. By the way, this is really light. With one hand, by the way. Yeah. This is those torsion bars. Well, actually, one, this <laughs> is how, one finger. Well, this is how strong I am. I mean, not, not everybody is this strong. That, that's exactly. And yeah. that's a steel uh, tailgate. So without the assist, trust me, you're still pretty strong. But OK, OK. No, but I noticed, so just on the tailgate, there's a camera, of course, in the center. I yes. like that because yep. some manufacturers sometimes shift the camera and then it's, side it's to the side. Top. And is this the light as well? Uh, that is a light, it, correct. Yeah. yeah, it's part of the zone lighting. So that's cool. And you got, yeah. So there's kind of a step here on the rear bumper, your hitch, of course, here. And then on the side of the truck, yeah. we have our all new box side step. Uh, our approach and execution is different than others. Others tend to have a smaller, shallow step on the corner bumper, where maybe if you're wearing big boots, you, you probably can't get your full foot in. Uh, with this box side step, holds 300 pounds. You can put two feet in there. You have a deeper reach into the box. So again, just a better experience altogether. I'm pretty heavy. I, I want to try But not 300. I'm not 300. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not yet. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> not yet. I, I, I could be 300 pounds in later. No, no, no. No, no, no. Uh, we need to trim down, you know, be efficient, right? Trim. The metabolism slows down when you get older. <laughs> so. Right, sorry, uh, we're anyways, so we're, we're, we're friends. We, yes, we've absolutely. known each other for yeah. a little while. Um, so I want to just talk about briefly payload and towing, right? Okay, yeah. So let's just check this. I mean, this is a pretty full-featured XLT. Yeah. Uh, we can look at the sticker and actually see in real time, right? So 1,704 pounds. Correct. That's quite a... This is a 4 by 4 uh, Say that again. Is it the four-wheel drive truck? Uh, no, this is not a four-wheel drive truck. I don't yeah, but on the four-wheel drive, it will be a little bit less, uh, correct, of course. Yeah. But still, that's a lot of payload. Yes, it is. On the 2.3-liter two-wheel drive, it's 1,805 pounds of payload. Okay. It's a mid-size pickup, so those are pretty big numbers. Yeah, and gross vehicle weight rating on this particular model, this is 6,050 pounds. So you have different gross vehicle weight ratings, of course, depending on the configuration of Raptor or not Raptor. Two-wheel right. drive or four-by-four. Two-wheel drive or four-by-four. But dude, this is a lot of payload. I mean, usually I would say 1,500 pounds would be like a good number for a mid-sized truck, but you're above that even. So Thank you. That's Thank you. The, the, what about okay. towing? You we, kept we, the number the same, 7, right? 7,500 pounds of towing across the line, except for the Raptor. I think on the Raptor, it's a little bit less, uh, 5,000. Well, we'll, we'll go, you in this episode, we'll go... We'll cut and we'll go to see the Raptor and then we'll talk about the Raptor Excellent. as well. Um, but so you get captured jumping the Raptor. Right. That'd be pretty cool on the video. Sweet. And now all new Rangers for 2024, 
their crew cab and oh, uh, five foot bed, right? Exactly. We went uh, with uh, one configuration. Most of the customers, the data was telling us this is what they were really getting. And ideally, you could put a heck of a lot into one versus a little bit less and more. So this is what the customers were, were demanding and buying. This is what we gave them. All right. Do you, can you, we jump in? Yeah, Do you yeah, want to go absolutely. on the passenger yep, side? Yeah. All right. Let's 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 check it out. Here we go. All right. So this is an XLT, but it's got one of the, well, first of all, this is cloth interior. Yes. Um, so there are various different levels of interior you can get. Um, I have a regular key. So that's and kind of refreshing. It is on Lariat and Raptor. It's a push button. Okay. Uh, XLT and STX, uh, XL trucks. Are, are key. Are exactly. key. So I can't start this. We're indoors. So, yeah, we're indoors. But we can at least power up and see some of the screens and see some of the interiors. By the way, it's a... Uh, as you can see, it's an all-new interior. Uh, even the seats, you know, the, the seat trim, the foam, they're on a new, a new, a new generation of frame. Uh -huh. uh, so the interior truly is all new. Um, uh, as you can see, we've got a conventional shifter here. We also offer an e-shifter that's available on the Lariat and on the Raptor. You'll see that tomorrow. Um, the e-shifter is kind of slick. It's still a shift lever. Customers, you know, in our in our catalog of parts, you know, uh, we do have, you know, rotary shift. Yes. Uh, 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 modules uh -huh. uh, our trucks the range of customers told us because we researched all this we do not like a rotary shift tone. so they we asked for this. this yes the actual lever they here they want a, a shift yeah, lever yeah, exactly yeah. so we listened we gave it to them uh we have available starting a 10 a 10 inch uh portrait screen center screen and upgrading to a 12 i think it's 12.4 inches and this on, is on the large that's the upgrade that's, that's the upgrade you got it and then eight inch and 12 inch on the instrument cluster so we're 100 percent digital on both um over the air up, uh, update capability as you heard earlier so uh, basically the the infrastructure or the the, the wiring system is next gen that's right? exactly yeah. it. this all new uh electrical architecture now we're able to get over the air updates and not just on like two or three modules but like on 30 plus modules okay. so um it's easy to send repairs you know out over like you know three i think usually like two to three times you do more of the major over the air updates but again now you're always keeping a vehicle up to date with uh features and and repairs as necessary yeah and i see here um first of all Two-wheel drives also have an optional locking differential. In the rear, you got right. it from the XL all the way up, yes. Yeah, not not many manufacturers do this, so no, this is don't. kind of interesting. Yeah, that's a pride this is, for us. This is kind of cool. Drive modes, of course, and this is uh, the trailer, trailer backup um, assist system. And you, for the trailer backup assist system, you still need the trailer sticker, right? Correct. Yep. Uh, you need this trailer sticker, and then that's all you got to do. You don't have to take any other measurements. The system itself will learn the trailer length, and uh, and so it's there's some you know algorithm AI at work. Versus in the past, you have to you used to have to do a lot more manual work yourself of measurements. So yeah. it, it's a cool you yeah. know uh, improvement I think in the experience. Okay. So just start, slap on a couple of stickers and let the system do its work. Gotcha. And of course, um, I mean, I, I used to own an F-150 and, you know, I, I test drive every kind of truck and this is one of my favorite kind of trailer management software systems. So um, you can uh, define your own trailer, you can name it whatever you want. It will track MPG for your trailer and distance you're towing, right? So it tracks all that stuff. Yeah. And also you can define your trailer Breaking brake controller. Effort, yeah. Your boost. I mean, it's, it, it's uh, again, uh, our feature owners really spent, they spend a lot of time actually doing it and spending time with customers on what are their pain points, right? And then addressing those pain points. It's all about that uh, that uh, uh, use case experience. This XLT has kind of a leather wrapped steering wheel, so yes. that's pretty, pretty nice. Uh, uh, adaptive cruise yeah. is available, right? Adaptive cruise with stop and go is available, correct. Um, uh, let me see, we've got, uh, in terms of the, of, the, of the instrument panel, it is on you. Uh, we've got obviously just a standard lower glove box, but now we have little this little shelf. shelf. Yeah. There's ambient lighting as well. The ambient lighting, there's a little light that falls down here. I think some lights that fall on the door trim panels, some on the foot wells. But in the Lariat and, and uh, Raptor, you also get an upper glove box as well. So you get this little button here on okay. some of those. We have new air, but new knee airbags. We didn't have knee airbags before. Uh, we had the traditional, you know, canopy, you know, uh, uh, inside, full airbags. inside airbags, but yeah. now we have knee airbags as well. Um, let me see what else. What, what about sunroof? Is sunroof one of the options? Uh, we available? don't have sunroof available okay. right now. Uh, we're, we're waiting. If the data is telling us 
the customers are saying, hey, I want a okay. sunroof, okay. Uh, we'll react you, you can, accordingly. You, can, yeah, exactly you right. can react to it. That's pretty sweet. I mean, this is kind of a, my, once again, first impression sitting yep, in the truck. Uh, wireless charger uh, for your phone. Uh, the, the, the power points are, and maybe I'll cast a little bit of light there for your camera. Uh, Thank you. I guess I'm not that good. There That's okay. It is. Yeah, so you got uh, USB-C, USB-A. Uh, I think you've got USB-C, USB-A, like right by your knee as well, by the photographer, by the videographer's knee. Yes, yes. Me. This is case, <laughs> case behind the camera. And we'll we'll go in the back seat in a second. Okay, cool. We've got uh, an overhead console as well. So customers really, in, in mid-size pickup is not a, lot, a full-size pickup, so it's a smaller cabin. So you got to have a lot of, you know, storage space uh -huh. so the console is big uh we've got storage space you know right underneath the the the, the ip itself the shelf of uh, your sunglasses the door trim panels on both sides have nice large openings for water bottles that sort of thing and mm -hmm. like you said we'll cover the rest uh when we go back. and this kind of binnacle on, on the on the top of the dash here are there some other warning there are lights, some warning or? lights that okay. pop up there as well okay. correct yeah, again, it's it's. Uh, you could do it here. You could do it up here. This is like right in your line of sight. It just kind of made sense for us to, you know, downward vision is is ideal to keep your eyes on the road. Yeah. And especially if you're off road, if you're towing. Oh, what's this? Uh, that is our new power rear windows. Whoa. Yeah, okay. So we used to have manual, and now we've got uh, power as well. Sweet, and that's optional. Obviously. You, uh, it is optional. Yep. It's it's heated. Uh, uh, in fact, even our front camera, you know, has is heated. So you know, for those foggy yeah. days. You're still able to use all the Right technology. now, it's pretty snowy and foggy, so... Yes, it yeah. is beautiful up here in Utah. Yeah. Well, let's look at the back seat really quick. All right. So here's the back seat, and... So this is a one-piece, one. right? Yep, one-piece. You go up and it locks. We have a, a similar storage as we had in the past. Uh, we actually saw like little vaults that you could put in and it's actual lockable storage. If you pull that again, it'll come back down. Okay. And now new, and these may be a bit further back, but these are fold flat, which is new for 2024 as well. There oh no, go. it does. It does it, fold yeah. flat. So it is fold flat. There's a little bit of storage back here. Obviously you got your jack. Uh, higher models is a big subwoofer for the packages right here. It sounds amazing. Uh, B&O, Bang & Olufsen. Um, obviously we've got our power. We've got our you know, 110, Another, 120, yeah. and our USB-C and USB-A ports, a little bit of storage back here, and the door trim panels again for water bottles, etc. Well, let me sit and down because- look at this. Oh. As well as- oh. Cup holders, look Cup at this. Cup holders in the center. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sitting kind of behind myself. I mean, I was pretty comfy in there, and I have a little bit of knee space. We and I, I'm, I'm almost 6'3", so I'm a pretty tall, we discussed my weight already, so <laughs> we're, we're not going to discuss that again, right? You're fine. You look great, Andre. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but actually, so one of the complaints we hear about all mid-size trucks is that back seat is kind of tight. But this one is actually, I'm surprised a little bit. I mean, this is pretty nice. Yeah. I, I'm 5'11", so I'm not 6, but as you can, I mean, I can go on a long trip here comfortably. Very yeah, comfortably. Nice. And again, you know, you got your storage for your, your drinks. In the middle, you have your center armrest. Not all not all the competition has center armrest, by the way. Um, so uh, we have your, your O-poop grab handles up on top uh -huh. uh, for easy assist to walk in and walk out. And so the, the interior environment, we spent a lot of time on really upgrading it. We got you. So we talked about towing a little bit. We can wrap up this, um, this part of the episode. Um, I just wanted to kind of frame the pricing a little bit, right? So it basically starts with as an S XL STX. Correct. So it has alloy wheels, and um, I was looking online, so I was configuring it. But the configurator is up, right? You can go configure the trucks. You could play around with options and colors and stuff like that. And here at the event, you have, I believe, a two-wheel drive STX. Yes. And I saw the MSRP of around 35. Correct. But it has a couple of options. Yeah. Uh, like the bedliner, for example, is optional, right? right? That's about 500 bucks. Yeah. So it kind of starts in a lower 30,000 range. Yeah. I think it also has a locker as well, the one that you saw. Yeah. yeah. So so that's like 35-ish, 35, 35 yeah. plus. Then, I mean, of course, it can go up, right? And I thought, I think I, the most expensive Lariat I saw was about 51 or 52,000. 
Am I kind of getting that you correctly? You are getting it uh, in the ballpark, correct? Yeah. Uh, I, I have not memorized them, and I don't want to get them wrong. I yeah. know you look at the spec sheet, so you, you got one up on me. Sure. I did not study them before this morning. But, yeah, you're spot on. And I think that the Raptor starts at... Like 55, 55 56. Yeah, 55. By the way... Which is a heck of a lot for that beast. Yeah. I mean, in terms of usability, what you're getting for your money, it's, it's a heck of a deal. Yeah, I, I would agree really uh, that the Raptor, I mean, people will say, oh, 55 grand is insane, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see it. <laughs> just, just hold on a second. We'll, we'll see it. And the stuff you're getting, you said dual lockers, 405 horsepower, yeah, twin turbo V6. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Watts link rear suspension, so precision. Fox suspension. You know, Fox suspension, yeah. exactly. Two and a half inch yeah. live. Oh, yeah. So there is some value here to be had. Um, well, I really appreciate your time thank you, again. Thank you, thank you, And the payload and torque and, and our, you know, max uh, towing capacity, yeah. those are not chump, you know, little small numbers. Yeah. So we're giving the customers, I think, a lot of, and a lot of uh, capability, a lot of comfort, a lot of technology. So their time with the vehicle, their experiences with the vehicle, it's all, again, maximized to, again, delight and, and make your life easier. Well, well, I know it's been a little bit kind of a, people have been waiting for this, so I'm glad you guys are building them and shipping them. So. Um, stay tuned. You should be able to see these trucks on the roads and in driveways pretty soon because, I mean, there's been a little bit of a delay, but now you guys are here. The, the UAW strike yeah. affected us. We were the first plant, Michigan Assembly plant, where we build the Bronco, our, our uh, sister, and yeah. uh, the, the Ranger, and we were the first plant to, to, to be struck. Yeah. So we were down, I'm gonna say, for at least maybe a month and a half. That's maybe a long time. Close to almost two months, so yeah. it, it, it affected us. It affected our launch, it did. So, well, I appreciate it. But, but we're there now. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Better late than never. <laughs> Thanks. There we have it. And now we're literally switching gears and trucks because it's Ranger Raptor time. And I'm here in the middle of a Utah desert <laughs> with Justin. Hey, Justin. Hey, nice to meet you. So, can you please introduce yourself briefly? Yeah, so my name is Justin Capicchiano and I'm the Ranger Raptor Program Manager. And you have an accent. Yes. Where, where are you from? I'm not from Utah. Um, <laughs> I'm definitely from Australia. Okay. So... The Ranger in general, and the Ranger Raptor, right? Yeah. Um, that's where these pickups are developed, right? Correct, yeah. So the Ranger Raptor and, and the whole Ranger range is um, designed, engineered, and developed in Australia. So you get the fun job, right? I'm Especially very lucky. Especially with this. Yeah, yeah, it's been fun. So how long have you been on this? Uh, so this is a second generation Ranger Correct. Raptor. Yep. Uh, US never got the first gen, but how long were you on this program? So I came in in late 2019 okay. to work on this. So well into the engineering phase. Um, hadn't built any prototypes or anything like that and then developed it through from there. All right, so I want to kind of have a, you know, look behind the development of the truck, right? Yeah. And here in the U.S., and we can um, walk a little bit towards the Bronco Raptor that's next to us. Uh, we got the Bronco Raptor first. Yes. I mean, of course, we had F-150 Raptors since, what, 2010. Uh, then we received this. And there's a little bit of confusion, I mm. think, because people think because the Ford Bronco and the Ranger in the U.S. and Michigan, they're built at the Wayne facility, right? Yes that they're the same vehicle. Right. Can you talk me through some of the yeah. elements behind it? Without getting too far into like the minutiae of timing plans and everything sure. like that, um, fundamentally, from a powertrain perspective, they were developed at the same time. So engine and transmission calibration, because they share that component, that was all done at the same time. Um, but from a when we got different cars in different markets, you have to remember that the range is also produced in our Thailand facility, so in our um, FTM plant uh, in Pattaya. So we've been, we have been probably very lucky, um, received the Ranger Raptor about 16, 17 months ago. Yeah. Probably a little bit before this, not, not like months and months, but sure. a few months before. Um, and now it's obviously going through its launch phase in uh, Michigan Assembly and now ready to go into North America. Gotcha. And um, so... You said powertrains are basically very similar. Yes. So we were talking about the three liter twin turbo V6. Yep. And of course the 10 speed automatic behind it. But it's also, uh, I think Carl calls it free flowing engine, right? It's mm. really meant for high performance. Yeah, it's it's a bespoke performance engine that's only shared with the, the Ranger Raptor and the Bronco Raptor. So that's its only real deployment in the truck. You know, I'll call it the T6 line. It's also in the Explorer um, or versions of it in that, but yeah. But, but then now let's talk about the chassis, right? Mm. So the Bronco Raptor, 
it's sitting on 37 inch tall tires it's really wide i mean you can see the wide fenders yeah um, and the wheelbase is Shorter. just meant for it yeah so now how is the ranger raptor different so i suppose the best way to start is if you start at the back and actually work your way to the front um the ranger raptor in the rear runs a watts link whereas the the bronco raptor runs a panhard yeah so they're horses for courses none of them is better or worse than the other it's just what suits the vehicle and what is it designed to do right so a watts link traditionally gives you a lot more lateral stiffness okay. so the way that we've designed and engineered this car and what you experienced today out there was something that's quite responsive and, and pointy in the way that it you know does its handling job. Um, a Watts Link is really, really suited for that kind of application. In the Bronco with the, the Panard and the Five Link that's in that, it's effectively really good for max travel, max jounce, you know, slow speed rock crawling, but also at the same time suitable for doing some of the high speed jumping and desert running. Okay, and uh, of course the pickup truck, the Ranger, I mean, it needs to hit, carry some payloads back here as yeah. well. And also the Ranger Raptor is capable up to, you know, 5,500 pounds of towing. Yeah. Uh, about two and a half tons, right? Correct, yeah. I'm, um, I'm on the kilo side, you're <laughs> on the pound side. I'm trying to convert everything in yeah, my me head. too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the requirements are a little bit different too. Correct, you know, yeah. it's a pickup truck versus an SUV. Yeah, at the end of the day, it can't, it can't have a, a, a bed in the back and not be able to put things in it. So... You know, whilst it is different to the, the base Ranger that you, that it's derived from, it's still quite practical. Gotcha. And um, the so the engine power numbers are a little bit different. So yeah. in the Ranger Raptor, it's 405 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque. Like we said, it's a 10-speed. Um, well, now let's talk about shocks, yeah. right? I think we could see the shocks here in the front. Yeah, so Ranger Raptor runs a 2.5-inch Fox live valve damper, so the Bronco runs a 3-inch. People might say, well, why didn't you put the three inch in yeah, the Yeah, why Ranger? not, why not? Because it's all about weight. So okay. this is a lot lighter. So the Ranger Raptor is a lot lighter than the Bronco Raptor. And fundamentally, you just don't need it. So if you'd put a three inch damper in this, it's going to feel really over, over damped, have too much compression and just fundamentally wouldn't work. So dampers just need to one of those things where they need to be right sized for the vehicle. And of course, it's everything is adjustable. And maybe Correct. we can show that inside as yeah, well, yeah. where I think Raptors have been known for this across the board, across the family, right? Yeah. Where each element is adjustable, is steering. Uh, let's talk about uh, how the Ranger Raptor compares to a standard Ranger. Yeah. You know, what, what are some other things so the best that are way, different? The best way that I can describe it is it's, it's everything other than the center rails between the, the two wheels are fundamentally different. So on a Ranger Raptor compared to a normal Ranger, you've got... Um, much more stronger beefed up shock tower mounts um, all the bracing and and steel work that's behind there is all bespoke and unique to the ranger and we don't cheat offset by wheels so ranger runs a, a 55 offset wheel which is quite conservative but the, tra the yet the track width is is 90 millimeters or three inches more than a base ranger okay. and we do all that in hardware so you can see in there we've got forged aluminium upper and lower control arms over here yeah yeah the steering rack is unique as well to the ranger raptor so it's not shared with the base ranger um it's probably got more in more in common with the bronco raptor than it does with the ranger Rap uh, with the um ranger itself Okay, I gotcha. So it is wider, definitely. I mean, the body components are different because you have a wider Yeah, track. so front fender, um, the rear of the, the bed is, is, is stretched out. So um, everything is, and designers love it because it means they can sort of do the pump, big pump guards and mm -hmm. the, the wide grills and it kind of looks really fit for purpose. Yeah, but it's less than 80 inches, which is kind of, you know, the, the width, at least here in the U.S., where you know it doesn't need, need those markers yeah. yeah correct yeah so that's why that it doesn't have that because it doesn't need them um keeping it under that 80 inch requirement is really important because what you got to remember as well is this is a global truck um going over 80 inches makes it difficult to live with in a lot of other countries mm -hmm. so you know we wanted to do one truck that was right for the world and and this is what we've ended up with and this powertrain transitions to other countries right yeah yeah so the, this um, v6 so basically everywhere in the rest of the world gets this option there are some markets in asia and um uh europe that take a bi-turbo version of this as well so uh, a two liter bi-turbo diesel which is yeah. fundamentally come from the previous generation raptor that you guys never got okay but in australia you also have the v6 right that's so twin turbo. We, yeah we only take the v6 twin turbo de, uh, petrol yeah sweet all right now let's talk about tires a little bit because yep. um i noticed 
uh, first of all, it's a 33. It's a 33. So it's not a, it's not a humongous tire. No. Uh, but it's also the BF Goodrich KL3. Yeah. Which is, a, I believe, the first OEM, major OEM introduction of this tire. Tire, yeah, correct. So first for Ford Performance and first in the broader market that's gone to the KO3. It's a three-ply tire, so um, it's, a, it's a custom tire for this specific application. So Michelin have obviously, yeah, we have a good relationship with them uh, and they've created us a custom tire, which is the new KO3 trade. Yeah, I was talking to Carl a little bit about this as well, and he said that usually manufacturers, and like for example Ford, mm. you guys have special requirements for the tire manufacturer, yeah. right? You communicate; it's a two-way street. Correct. It's not like they just give you a tire off the shelf no. and you go, okay. Yeah. So one of the things we're looking for is like, you know, sidewall stiffness. The way we wanted this car to, to handle, we wanted a, a sidewall that was a little bit stiffer than like a two-ply or something that was on a. You know a Bronco because that just doesn't give you that immediate steering response. Gotcha. Uh, now I wanted to talk a little bit about the configurability of it. Yep. You know the uh, what systems you can change and how that you know different driving modes etc. Yep. So one of the good things about the Ranger Raptor and any of the Ford Performance vehicles is that you can fundamentally set a starting point like if you go into a sport mode you can leave it there or you can change elements within that so if you wanted to have sport mode but with a quiet exhaust because that's what you wanted you can do that and once you've done that then you can save it using the the my mode feature which is all located on the steering wheel so it gives you that customization and sort of ability to make it yours rather than sort of like taking what we've done and then going from there. And we even do that with the drive mode. So, you know, you can go into Baja mode, like mm -hmm. that you experienced today. Yeah. And that gives you an element of control within the stability system. But should you be brave enough um, or, or want to experiment a little bit more, sure. you can start turning those things off. So you can turn off, you know, your stability control and fundamentally you're on your own, right? Well, that's always the fun of the enthusiast, right? The enthusiast driver. I mean, the more advanced vehicles are becoming, you know, often the computers come in. Yeah, and, yeah. and you, you don't want to preclude anyone from the experience. So you want to make sure that if someone's a novice, that they can get in and have fun as well. But if you're an expert driver and you've got a lot of experience with the vehicle, then we want to be able to give you that flexibility to experience the car as it is. Right. And so as the Raptor kind of progressed through these generations, and I'm also thinking about the F-150 Raptor as yeah. well, um, you could control more elements. So, mm -hmm. for example, originally, you know, you could control uh, the shift points of the transmission and the powertrain, right? Then the shocks came in, the life shocks, and then now steering. Yeah. And also sound is sound. now configurable. Yeah. So exhaust sound is all configurable, steering, you know, whether you're in comfort, normal or off-road. Um, off-road has benefits around, like, steering catch, so it's, you know, if you're going crossed up or you're going off-road down big rock steps, sometimes you get that big steering kick. Um, putting it into the off-road mode dampens some of that off, so you don't get that big second motion in the steering wheel, which is just, like, it's just nice to have. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's, it's another way that we just try and cater to the customer's needs. And what about braking system? That's also kind of adjustable or uh, in different modes, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. So um, the driver can't customize the, the braking system. It's not an option for them to select. But what is what is available is when you do go into those, um, I'll call them sportier modes, you do get additional ability around what we call threshold braking limits. So if you're driving off-road and if you've ever had an ABS car in a dirt road situation, you put your brakes on hard, your ABS immediately kicks in because right. it thinks it's like loose surface, doesn't really know how to handle it. Um, with a Ranger Raptor and, and Bronco Raptor as well, uh, we up the threshold limit of the amount of ABS that can kick in. So you get an extra um, nearly 30% of additional threshold braking limits. So just allows that material to build up in front of the tyres and slows you down before you get into that ABS kick. Interesting. I mean, so it's all, there's a lot going on behind the lot. scenes, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and the, the idea is that you as a driver aren't noticing all of that. It's just there to help you. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a, it's a different way of engineering a vehicle than what you would normally see on a mid-sized pickup truck. Gotcha. And uh, why didn't you guys put a bigger tire or go wider? I mean, we talked about width a little bit already. Yep. What about like the tire size selection? So how, how does that work? Yeah. So when you uh, when one of the things that we wanted to you know make sure we talked about today was around 
each vehicle having its own distinct character and, and capability level, right? What we wanted to do here is prioritise off-road handling and speed. Um, for us, we can get as much you know speed and, uh, and performance out of the vehicle with a 33 without sacrificing travel. So the second you start putting a 35 on the vehicle, you're compromising something. You're compromising travel. You're gaining some ground clearance, mm -hmm. but you're sacrificing something else. And for us, our priority was was travel. Makes sense. And and also, like you said, weight is another consideration. Yeah, you know, yeah. the tyres become heavier, um, steering response becomes more latent. So those kind of things are really important to us, that so we protect them and manage them. What about uh, owners modifying their vehicles? Um, a lot of people, you know, buy their trucks and pickups and they start, you know, doing yeah, suspension, yeah. Li lifts, different tyres, different offsets. But it, uh, I'm looking at this Ranger Raptor and we just talked about everything that's behind the scenes, all the adjustability, all the configurability. When you're touching one element, like the height of the truck, <laughs> right, you're upsetting the balance of the truck, yeah, right? Yeah, you can because, you know, the, the live valve dampers have fundamentally got different, like, zones. Okay. So when you are in, as it sits right now, driving around normally, it's in its, you know, ride zone, right? If you start playing with spring heights, you can push the vehicle out of its ride zone and push it into the off-road zone that impacts your, your ride, right? So yeah. it, it impacts your primary ride and makes it a harsher thing. So, you know, for customers that are wanting to, to modify their cars, we understand that there's people who are gonna find ways and engineer things and we get that, right? Like that, that's part of off-road life, right. you know? Um, but there are offsets for that. So everyone just needs to go into it with their eyes open. Yeah, and consider the holistic picture, right? The, yeah. the, the bigger picture of the vehicle. I suppose it's like, we get it. People want to customize it, make it their own. We understand that. Um, at the same time, we look at it and say, we designed it for a specific purpose to do a specific thing. Um, it's it's optimized for that. And then if a customer wants to do something else with it, that's that's up to them. Sweet. Tell me a little bit about like your testing. Uh, how do you do testing for specifically yeah. Ranger Raptors, for so, example? So there are no there are no. Um, free pass is given just because we're in Australia and we do Australian things, right? <laughs> so we have to do the same level of development testing as what they do on the Bronco Raptor for it to be called a Raptor. Uh -huh. uh, it has to meet the same DNA requirements um, that's cascaded to us by our Ford Performance team in the US. So we definitely do reach back to them and touch back to base. Um, but we have to do the same desert running. So 1200 miles off road at race speed before we can sign it off and call it a Raptor. So. This has done it, the Bronco's done it, and the F-150s have done it as well. Um, we added to that, and during our development phase, we, we took this to the Baja 1000 in 2022, um, finished it, so technically that means we won our class. Um, we beat the two class eight trucks above us uh, as well. And then what we did after that, we took the same truck um, back to Australia, okay. and we entered it into the biggest desert race that we've got in Australia, which is the Fink Desert Race, and we won our class there as well. So, same vehicle, same, same car, same, same car, same engine, transmission, everything, same car, right? And you know we've we've got it parked up, looking pristine and ready to go again. And then you own one as well, right? I have one. You, yeah. you personally have one. Yeah. And you've pulled some trailers with it as well. Yeah, I've pulled trailers yeah. with it. Um, I've put things in the back of it. I've put things on top of it. I go <laughs> off-roading in it. I've taken it a number of places around Australia, and I'm up to about nearly thirty-five thousand kilometers of hard driving, and it's I just love it. That's pretty good. Thanks. Well, thank you. I appreciate no your worries, time. Andre. Thank you. I appreciate it. And of course, I'm really happy that the Ranger Raptor is finally here. Yeah, you know, well, we've been and I hope waiting. you enjoy your one. So, yeah. yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. No worries. Thanks. Well, hopefully, you guys are enjoying this in depth look at the all new 2024 Ford Ranger and the Ranger Raptor. And I, I wanted to finish this uh, podcast with a couple of thoughts. First of all, all of these trucks are shipping now and they're available. Secondly, they're also on the EPA side for fuel efficiency. The new Ranger Raptor um, latest EPA ratings are 17 MPG combined. So it's not really a <laughs> the most efficient pickup truck out there, but it's not supposed to be. It's really focused on performance. And it's actually 17 MPG sounds lowish for a combined rating, but it's quite competitive if you look at vehicles and trucks like the Chevy Colorado ZR2 and the ZR2 Bison, of course GMC equivalent of that, the uh, Canyon AT4X and AEV editions, uh, and some of the other beefier vehicles. 
Um, the curb weight on the new Ranger Raptor is between about 5,350 pounds and 5,400 pounds. Let's quickly look, take a look at this payload. It should be around uh, 1,300 pounds, which is once again, not a crazy amount of payload. Here it is, 1,321 pounds. Here's a sticker in the door. And you can see the gross vehicle weight rating is 6790. So if you take that number minus 1320, you'll come up with a curb weight of this truck, which is getting to be a little bit heavy. <laughs> We're here in the muddy field um, in Utah in the middle of um, this uh, driving event. Uh, like we mentioned already, the Raptor tows up to about 5,500 pounds. So you're losing a little bit of, you're losing about 2,000 pounds of towing capability when you compare it to the standard Ranger. And then if we get inside, I kind of wanted to show you a little bit of the inside. So first of all, this has the premium screen. So the central vertical screen is 12 inches so this is the larger one of course it has push button start and i cannot see it from my driver position but i can kind of feel it it's right here right on the steering column right there i just wanted to show you some of the features that justin and i just discussed okay started up the engine the steering wheel is unique so it's really thick i got my thumb holds here of course, it has orange stitching and orange accents. It says Raptor at the bottom of the steering wheel, and I have a 12 o'clock orange stripe on the steering wheel, so which, which has been kind of a Raptor signature, basically making sure the driver knows exactly where the steering wheel is pointed as they're driving. Then, of course, these vents are unique with a little bit of the code orange Raptor uh, color accents and a full 12 inch display on the gauge cluster here you can see the design of the digital gauges is a little bit unique and there's a little bit more information shown because this is a ranger raptor um, you can kind of see the psi of the turbochargers uh, of course the temperatures the oil temperature and coolant and then i wanted to direct your attention here so this section the, these buttons look similar to what's available on like a regular Ranger or a Ranger Lariat or some of the other XLT premium models. And this is basically a way to change the screen and to show a little bit more of information as far as your chassis. And this does have front and rear locking differentials. They're selectable, but the buttons are digital. So you can click it off and on. And it has trail control mode, which is basically low speed off-road cruise control. You can monitor your tire pressures, of course, um, and cameras, camera views. Then this is also unique. It has a unique transfer case here for the uh, Raptor version of the Ranger. Four automatic mode is available. And also the tra uh, trailer backup assist system is also here. You can see this this knob in the center console as well. And it's trying to shift. It thought I asked it to shift, sorry. So it just shifted to two wheel drive high. Two high is available. And I love that they're giving configurability to this truck. Uh, like we talked about different driving modes. Of course, there's eco sport. There is wet uh, terrain, there's uh, sand. There's many different levels of that. And then, you could also select, for example, a rear locker in two high and in the Baja mode. And you can also disable traction control system, or if you hold this traction control off button, you can also disable the advanced track or stability systems like Justin was talking about. So you have a lot of configurability. As a pickup truck guy, I, I love that because first of all, the gauges and then also all the configurability and different elements of this truck. Also on my steering wheel, there are um, other controls. So for example, you can change the sound of the exhaust system from normal to sport to Baja to quiet. 
you can really make this cabin a lot quieter. There are valves in this exhaust system. You can control the dampers. These are live Fox live valve shocks from a throw to normal. And a lot of these configurations can also be remembered in the Raptor mode. So you can customize your feeling of the truck. And if you hold the R button on the steering wheel, it becomes your mode, called my mode. So a lot of configuration. I, I love that feature. There's also paddle shifters here on the steering wheel. So you do have 10 speeds, 10-speed uh, automatic transmission, and then you can you can use this is really fun. I mean, it really kind of changes the character of this truck. And on the ceiling here, you do have six auxiliary switches. So you can add lights and other accessories. Um, I haven't seen a winch mount for the Ranger Raptor yet. Um, but like Justin was saying, this truck has been out on sale in other parts of the world. So uh, quite a few accessories are already available. And it also has a brake controller. So yeah, it tows 5,500 pounds, which is not a huge amount but it's good enough for a small boat, small camper, a utility trailer, and it's fully capable with brakes. So all of that is here. And also many of these Rangers have parking assist where it will help you park. So yeah, it has a lot of different features. And of course the seats are unique. You can see the bolsters, high bolsters on the seats, different headrests, of course, orange accents throughout. And now the starting price. I wanted to discuss um, the starting price, which is in the US, including destination charges, um, is just over $57,000. I think it's $57,045. Like All right, some of you might, might be saying, well, that's, that's a huge amount of money uh, for any midsize truck. But when you consider everything you're getting in the Ranger Raptor for 57 k I think it's actually highly competitive and also good value because if you're buying, for example, a new Colorado Zero 2 Bison, so Bison with all the skid plating and those 35 inch tall tires and the bump, hydraulic bump stops, uh, you will be paying, if you got the ZR2, that's around 49 to 50 grand. But if you're buying a ZR2 Bison with all the skid plates and those big 35s and a fully you know, full steel bumpers, that's another like $11,500, which puts it over $60,000 for a ZR2 Bison. If you're getting 84X AEV edition, the price is even higher. I think it's in the mid 60s uh, for that midsize truck. If you're buying a Jeep Gladiator, Rubicon or Mojave, they start around, I believe 55,000 and with options, they can go way into the $60,000 range. And none of those trucks have over 400 horsepower like this one does. So there's definitely a lot of goodness built in to this truck, even though it may not have every top spec. Ground clearance is around 10.7 inches on the Ranger Raptor. Approach angle is around 33 degrees. Departure angle is around 24, or I'm sorry, 26. And the breakover is about 24 degrees. So yes, there are other pickup trucks in this segment with better on paper numbers. Uh, but I think when you look at the holistic picture, the new Ranger Raptor is um, pretty interesting and very appealing um, as far as this new entry into the segment and it's coming in and taking the segment and, and it needs to do it because so far Ford you know, struggled with delays, factory delays, component shortages, and they really need to step up. And also the new Tacoma TRD Pro is about to launch, which has a hybrid which has um, even more torque than, than this 430 pound-feet of torque in this V6 um, because of that hybrid system in the Tacoma. And it's about to launch in April or May of this year. So, and the Tacoma is a class-leading vehicle. They sell, well, they, of course, they're switching over to a new generation, so they're struggling with their numbers a little bit right now. But traditionally, they sell about 20 to 22,000 trucks every single month. And if Ford wants to compete, they really need to come out with their, you know, best foot forward. And I think they're, what I'm seeing right now, I think they're doing that. Um, as long as they bring good value and good, good technology to the market. I think they can compete and grow their sales and kind of get back into the fight because 
GM is really strong in this segment now. Nissan Frontier is still there. Of course, Honda Ridgeline, Jeep Gladiator, all those trucks are still here. So Ford really needs to step up and get the factory pumping and start building Rangers um, and start selling them. So thanks for joining me on this episode. Uh, hope this was interesting to you from the road in Utah, talking to all the experts at Ford. And uh, I'll see you next time. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, meet up with Nathan again and do the next episode together. And also address a lot of your questions on patreon.com slash TFL car, where you can support us and also talk to us, communicate with us, ask us questions or give us feedback right there on patreon.com slash TFL car. So I really appreciate it. I'll see you on the next episode next week. See ya.